magnificent. And then right here, here's Lacey. She's also, she's our Pygora doe that we breed with. Oh, I'll come. I better grab some grain. It has been snowing and wintry for several days now. It's actually kind of drippy out now. Like since yesterday, it's been fluctuating between rain and snow. But we've also had some really terrible flu going on here at our house. So I missed last week. Um, putting out a creative intentions video and I'm just now kind of getting my creative groove going back on so this week I thought that maybe I could just do some shots of um, how I spin yarn from the fiber that I get from our very own goats um, and do a, just a little bit of tour with the tools that I use and um, let you meet the animals and so we'll see how this goes. Alrighty so I am outside and ready to give you a peek at our little goat herd. So I am really squinty. It's very bright out here all of a sudden uh, but we're having lots of snow and so wintry. But let's take you over to see the goats. So right here we have this little escapee. He's one of our meat goats. And uh, oh it looks like here's Thor. Thor is the Pygora and he's our buck. And he's pretty magnificent. And then right here, here's Lacey. She's also she's our Pygora dough that we breed with. Oh, I'll come. I better grab some grain. Alright, I grabbed some, some nibbles here. Look at everybody wants to see me now, don't they? There we go. Here's all these goaty goats. There's one of the kids. <laughs> oh boy. They are excited. That's Gaston, whose fiber you... Um, see in the other part of the video. And hey guys, back off, back off. Oh, there's Hansel. He's an Angora. Hey, Hank's out here with me. It's going crazy. There's Gretchen. So, they're all under the covering here. Trying to stay warm and dry. And, um, anyway, so yeah, here they are. Oh, it's Princess Leia. She is our Nubian milk goat. But here you go. A little peek at our small little herd of goats. Some of these guys are going to get sold this spring and won't be coming all the way on our move with us. But um, <laughs> they're excited to see me. Yeah, aren't you beautiful? That one right there. That's one of the Pygoras that I'll probably be selling. Yep. Super fun. Hey Hansel. You're pretty awesome. I guessed on. <laughs> oh, that is Reese's. I couldn't remember. Yep, that's Reese's. And somewhere here we have Oreo. Oh, there's Oreo. So those two are siblings. They are um, Gretchen. This is Gretchen. Who is... Um, a Nigerian dwarf, but so she bred with the Pygora, so they're a blend of Nigerian dwarf and Pygora. Rhesus and Oreo. All right, I think we're gonna say goodbye, go to goats. Say goodbye, go to goats. Goodbye, go to goats. They're like, wait, give me more grain. Give me more grain. So pardon the noisiness outside my door. It's all happy noise, so I'm going to try to ignore it. Maybe you can too. 
so this tool that I wanted to show you is um, one that my husband built for me and it's called a picker and it has these nails on this sliding um, piece here and it also has them down in the bottom and what it's for is um, after I've washed a fleece it tends to then mat up. You know, it's not very fluffy. And so, if we put it in here, we can fluff it all back up again. And we can also open up all these fibers so that we can remove um, the vegetable matter. Vegetable matter is like cheatgrass and hay and just anything that's organic. <coughs> And it also opens it up and it leaves any dirt that's still left over. The dirt in the bottom of this is actually from a different fleece I was um, running through here. I've also run fleeces through my picker before washing to help open it up to help um, get it clean. But basically I just slide this back and forth and move it around. And this has been so useful. I just built this for me this summer. And it has um, really helped with my fiber processing. I have gotten a little discouraged at um, processing my own fleeces. It was much easier to purchase ones that were already clean and fluffy. But I was feeling bad because I wasn't utilizing the resource that I have of our own goats. So, um, now I can, and this is one of the tools that I use for that. This is one of my very newest fiber tools that I am most excited about, and it is a Brother Drum Carter, and what it does is it combs the fibers for me and gets them all nice and um, aligned and ready to spin into yarn and what you do basically is you lay some bits of fiber here and then you turn the crank and these two um, wheels turn and they both have these um, teeth on them and it combs the fibers this is a, a packer brush and it goes down to help pack it all on and in the end you get a material that's called a bat. So I'm going to set the camera up so you can just watch me um, and I'll talk about what I'm doing for a little bit and then, um, then we'll jump to the end and I'll show you my finished product and from there then I'll move on to showing you my spinning wheel. Okay, so I don't really have a plan for the type of yarn I want to spin right now. I just really feel like I need to just tap into my creative self and just allow uh, me to think and come up with things as I go for a little bit. So I do have this um, fiber that you saw in my picker and it is um, Pygora Kid, and it's from Gaston, whom you should have met in the um, video introducing my animals. And he has bits of white that are on his chest, but mostly he's kind of this, got this grayish black color, or his kid fleece did anyway. He's actually a lot lighter. Um, these days. It's very, been very interesting to see him grow. So I'm going to be using a lot of this, um, but I found that I like working with this most when I've blended it with other things. So I have on my table here a package of mixed, um, mixed fibers, scrap things that I got off of Etsy from SD Spin and it came with silk and wool and bamboo and um, just all kinds 
of different fibers that are fun to play with in little bits and you know not enough to have one specific thing but very nice for making what's called art bats and I have done a lot of experimenting with mixing silk in my Pygora fibers and I like that but I think I want to feel like I want to stay away from that today it can get kind of tedious in that it can get wound up around my carter although there are bits of silk stuck to here so I decided I chose this um, chocolate brown that I'm going to create a bottom layer I learned this technique by watching many drum carding videos on YouTube um, but I'm going to make what's called a sandwich and so one of these is for a bottom layer and the other is for a top layer and I also recently watched a video that said that she learned that um, if you put so a lot of people most people you see this is this is a lock I just pulled off and this is how long the staple is for this particular fiber which is a wool of some sort um, and most of the time most people would take it and line it up and put it going straight in the proper direction there but she learned a tip that if you put it in the opposite direction it helps things open up more and you get a loftier yarn so I'm gonna experiment that with that today <coughs> so you just put a little bit here and we're gonna feed it in I'm gonna put down my little packer brush here and just gonna let it get pulled onto the drum and I'm gonna do a little more and I'm just not in a hurry because, like I said, I'm creating this as I go today. So, I'm just going to create a bottom layer on here. Okay, so now I've got all that on there and I'm just spinning it around and looking for any remaining vegetable matter that I can pick out with my little tool here, a little piece right there, and any other flaws that I don't want in it. I had noticed a few things pop up as I was spinning this. especially since I don't know my desired purpose. Okay, so that looks good. So now I think I'm going to go ahead and work with some of this Pygora and get a layer of it mixed in. And now these are kind of all going different directions. They haven't been lined up at all like that other piece of wool. So I'm just going to fluff it up and I'm pulling out any big hunks of anything I find that I don't want there. And I'm going to let it go down to the drum. I really do love this and I cannot wait to get set up in my new place um, and I plan to process um, fibers not only for myself but to, to put in the shop to sell to other spinners so but I really want to get good at it I've only had 
this drum cutter since December. I bought it for myself before Christmas. Alright, so I've got a nice layer in there of some of that Pygora Kid. Now something else that's cool is we can comb it down further by holding this brush here. Also, let's kind of pack it down a little bit more. Okay, so what should we pick next? Let's see, right on top is this beautiful, um, what did you call this color? It's a blue purple. Would it be a violet? I have a daughter violet. Oh, it's very pretty. It's very soft. So, let's see what happens when we add this one in here. I'm going to keep with my idea of Pulling these locks out, putting them in sideways. Now this is what's fun, watching these colors get slicked up on the here. Ooh, it's so pretty. I hope you can see that coming up on the camera. Let me see if I can get it in here. You see the the color starting to show up amongst the natural. Very nice. Okay. Got a bit more here. I think I'll order from SD Spin again. She sent me a little bonus fiber, which was a nice touch. It's all wrapped up in pretty tissue paper. Um, let me see if I can grab that really quick. It's very pretty, this bonus um, bamboo. It's dyed very lovely. I quite enjoy it. I'm not sure what I'll do with it yet pondered on whether or not I wanted to stick it in this today. We'll see. I've not actually ever worked with bamboo before, so maybe we will, since we're just kind of doing a creative spurt. <coughs> <coughs> Alright. So now we got that pretty purpley color. What should we do next? I have this kind of a reddish pink. There's a teal. There's also some nice white. Maybe we'll lighten things up. We've kind of been dark so far, so maybe we'll do we'll we'll um, we'll see. What if, do I have any other, there's that bit of blue, those are all silks, there's some yellow, uh, oh that's some dark locks, I don't think I want to do that today, uh, oh, I've got pink and there's some more yellows. What if I kind of go to those blues? I have any greens. So we've also got this natural alpaca here. Oh, I love alpaca. I'm gonna leave that for a different, different one. I think. Oh, we've got some sparkle. Should we put sparkles? I've not worked with sparkles either. So, all right, I think, I think we'll work on sticking all these in and um, dispersing them with the Pygora. So I think I'm going to, in between each colored layer, I'll stick some of that Pygora. 
Um, first, I'm going to go ahead and add this tiny bit of blue in with this other um, purpley color, just because there's only a tiny bit here. And it should blend up nicely. Give it a little more dimension. Alright, I'm going to do a little more of this. And I'm going to add some Pygora. i turn the camera off for a little bit. Save my battery. But I'll come back and show you what I'm working on in a minute. So another method of getting fiber onto the drum carter, other than feeding it down here, is to do what's called painting it on. And I found this really shiny bamboo in this pile over here. So we're going to use this instead of that other bamboo. And we're going to do this method of painting it on. So to paint it on, we're just going to go like this and let the teeth grab some of it and give it a turn. I think some people like this because it makes them feel like they have a little more control over where things get placed. Also, sometimes I find certain fibers don't really want to take up with the, um, when I feed it in, they don't want to, the liquor doesn't want to pull it on. That's what the smaller drum is called. It's a liquor. Well, this bright red is going to be, create some interesting things there. Bright bamboo. All right, so my drum's beginning to get a bit full. So I'm just gonna finish off by adding this pale yellow and this white sparkle. And I'm not gonna put any of the pygore in between. And then we'll pull it off of here and see what kind of bat we created. Okay, here is the really exciting part. So there's this spot on my drum carter that doesn't have any of these um, teeth. And so I use this tool, or you can use a dowel or a knitting needle. And I go in here and I begin separating. All right. Now, what I get to do is roll it off. Silly me, I'm rolling it the wrong way. Of course I would do that when I'm on camera here. Okay, so I'm gonna roll this side. It's much easier that way. The other direction I was trying to go against. So I just keep rolling it off. I did end up putting that last sandwich layer of the chocolate brown on there. And there's a little bit on my bottom layer, a little bit of brown alpaca that I had from another job that's picking up. There we go. Alright, so now we have it all rolled up into this delicious ball. But if we open it up here, see on the colors and when I sit down to spin this I'm going to show you the most awesome part about opening up this fiber sandwich here and but while it's in a ball here I'm gonna go weigh it and see how much I have and then in our part two which will probably be next week's video so hit subscribe so that you don't miss it. So I don't like that hunk right there. Anyway, um, next week's video, I'll show how I'm gonna spin this up on my spinning wheel. So there's that pile of random fibers I was picking from. Mm. It's another view of this. Thank you so much for watching and finding 
how I process some fibers in my picker and my drum carter. Hopefully you learned a little bit of something. And thank you for allowing me just to be creative without much intention right now. Um, but I am going to turn it into something with a purpose. So stay tuned and watch part two.